Hello, welcome to Grapevine's Tips and Tricks. I am Andy Sophia Fontaine, news editor. And my name is Hannah Jane. I'm the culture editor and listings director. Mm. And today our topic is healthcare in Iceland and the medical system, which is a massive and extremely complicated topic, but we're going to try and simplify it for you um, as much as we can. And this is tailored for people who have just moved to Iceland, immigrants, people who I guess didn't grow up within the system. So it's it's a bit confusing. I at least found it extremely confusing at first. Did you? Yes. <laughs> yes, no question. Um, if you have additional bits of advice that you want to leave, of course, drop them in the comments, whether you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. And um, hit the bell button for notifications. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, as always, be sure to check out our online chat and consider subscribing to any of the four high five clubs if you have not already in order to help us keep the lights on around here. So yes. without further ado, <laughs> first topic, um, um, first subheading under this topic, <laughs> I guess, is are you even insured? Yeah. If you've been a legal resident for at least six months, then yes, you are insured. Um, if you're from the European economic area, Schengen, if you will, and you're insured there, then bring your insurance card with you because you'll be covered in Iceland as well. Yes. However, if you're from outside of the EEA, if you're outside of Schengen, um, whether you're coming from North America or anywhere else in the world, you will have to pay full price for everything yes. related to the healthcare system. So do get private insurance yes. before arrival. And just to clarify, we're talking about people who are moving here on residence permits. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're on a student residence permit from outside the EEA. That means you are not covered for the first six months that you are in Iceland. But as you'll see in the like the terms of your residence permit, you are required to get a private insurance that covers in Iceland. Now, I think an immigrant favorite is um, something called Shova. Shova. Shio oh. Did I? Shovau. Shovau, okay. Yes. I made that up. Um, <laughs> That's definitely an immigrant favorite, um, mostly because their site is entirely in English. Yeah. Their phone service is also really helpful, mm -hmm. and it's uh, 13,000 kroner for six months, yes. which 13,000 is a lot to drop at once, but it will cover you for six months. Yes. And then after that, you'll be on the regular Icelandic national insurance. Um, I never used the Shovau insurance while I was here, but I assume it covers, um, you know, the gamut of things that Icelandic insurance would cover. So one would hope. I hope so. Yes. Um, and I've never heard of someone having a problem with this. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say is if you're from the United States, um, and you're under 26, you're, um, under Obamacare or the affordable care act. That's what it's called. I think, mm -hmm. um, you can still be under your parents' insurance. So if there are things that Siovau doesn't cover, um, you can take those bills and you could submit them to Obamacare and it will you'll get some money back. Mm -hmm. Just just a just a nice note. But again, after six months of residency in Iceland, you will be covered by Icelandic insurance. Mm -hmm. Which takes us Yeah. To what insurance covers here. And Bear in mind that all of these links are going to be in the description mm -hmm. of the YouTube video. So if you're watching this on Facebook, <clears throat> pop on over to our YouTube account and check out the links there. Um, you know, Shukra.is slash English has a trove of very helpful information where this is concerned, including what insurance covers. And there's quite a bit of that. Um, just just for reference, Siukrau is the health system like yes. website, the in, the insurance website. Um, I just wanted to put that out. Um, yeah, it's true. And you have a login for that. It's the same one that'll work on like Fioskrau and other websites. Now, to get any medical information on Siukrau or Fioskrau, Sukra and Fioskrau, you will need something called a Skilriki, which maybe we'll do an episode on just random stuff you need to know in Iceland, but a Skilriki is a login that gets you sensitive information, such as like your test results from a medical test, mm -hmm. um, and it's tied to your phone number and your SIM card. So you can get one by going to the bank and they'll set you up with one. It's very easy, provided you have like a new-ish SIM card. 
if your SIM card doesn't work, go to Nova, go to wherever your phone provider is, and they'll they'll fix it for you. But anyway, if you go on Sucrow, you can see um, what is covered, what is not covered, um, and you can go from there. Mm-hmm. Now, so you now you have your insurance, you know what's covered, you know what isn't. Where do you go see a doctor? Yeah, and that will take us to health clinics. It's a bit decentralized in this sense. Like, although there is a ministry of health, but the health clinic, or in Icelandic, Hilsugaisland, that you visit is going to be relevant to your neighborhood. So for that, you would just go to the main page of hilsugaisland.is, and there'll be a list of neighborhoods, and you'll see where in your neighborhood your health clinic is. You can't visit other clinics that are outside of your neighborhood. Um, They're open from eight to three for appointments, but as is noted, helpfully, you can (laughs) pop in between four and 5 p.m. without an appointment in case something comes up. So like the pop by hours, again, so if you have something wrong in the morning, you can call the number um, and make an appointment with something called a like Hemelisleikner, which is a home doctor, which is basically just your general doctor, and you can go there, of course, tell them your medical issue. They will refer to you if, to a specialist if need be, or prescribe you whatever you need, etc. Now, that, again, you can call and make an appointment, but if something happens and you just uh, want to show up, that is when you go from four to five. Now, if you're going to take advantage of these pop-by hours, go get there early, especially if you're going to the one downtown. Oh, yes. I'd show up at three o'clock and wait, to be honest. Like, I, I'd show up at, because th- um, I guess the important thing about these pop-by, pop-by, we're calling it that, that's not the name, but these pop-in hours is um, that, you know, you can call up and ask for an appointment and they might have an appointment in a few days or, or you know, not that day. And if you really need help, you can just go to those hours and they'll help you right then. But again, get there early. They're from four to five. I'd show up at three. Mm-hmm. That's very good advice. Now, those have a flat rate for the appointments. Mm-hmm. So during working hours, which is, as we said before, from eight to three, um, where you would call beforehand and make an appointment, it's 3,400 kroner for a visit. Um, within those pop-by hours that we so aptly named, <laughs> It is 4,500 kroner for a visit. Um, if you're watching this in the future or something, I mean, of course you're watching this in the future. Anyway, uh, haha. No, I mean, if you're watching this some sort of time significantly in the future, potentially prices have changed. You can check that online. <laughs> At the time of this recording, these are the prices, is what Han is trying to say. <laughs> and today it is <laughs> January 26th. <laughs> Okay. Anno Domini 2021. <laughs> it's 4.07. Yes. Okay. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> at these home doctors, like at the clinics, you can get, get like basic tests. They'll give you prescriptions, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you have any questions for health things after hours. Yeah. Then you, you've got like Navactin. Um, this, and they have a four digit number for those of you. In Iceland, if you have an Icelandic phone number, you dial 1770. And that's a general health line where you can ask all kinds of questions, like if your child has an extraordinary fever, um, if you've got a, like some sort of development that you don't understand, you have a health-related question, you can call them 24-7. <laughs> but they're also open after hours. Um, on work days, they begin to open at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and will stay open until 11.30 at night. On weekends, they open at 9 in the morning and will stay open again until 11.30 at night. And they have locations in Reykjavik, but also outside of Reykjavik. The one in Reykjavik is in Østerver, which is the neighborhood behind Kringland, like east of Kringland. <laughs> and the, but they're, the one that they're most known for is near Smaderland Mall in Kopavogur. And yeah, because health emergencies or rather like health flare-ups that are not necessarily of an emergency variety, but do need attending to, can happen any time of the day. And Iceland is aware of this, and so that's why they have this service. I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing about watching in the future. (laughs) That's why I was smiling during that. I do not find health emergencies funny. (laughs) Okay, 
So now you've gone to the doctor, you've talked to the doctor, they've given you a prescription. You can pick up your prescriptions at pharmacies um, around the country. That mm -hmm. seems pretty obvious. But now we're getting into sort of the more cal like um, the more complicated side of, of Icelandic insurance, which is basically how much you're paying, like your copay, mm -hmm. um, at a certain time. Because if you've lived here, you will notice that you pay you'll pay different prices for the same thing over the year. And you can sort of, if you're me, you just sort of say like, oh, okay, like why would they lie about this and just trust the system but that's probably not the best way to do it uh, no. you should you should stay up to date on what's going on so um in iceland there's basically sort of a sliding scale system based on how much you've already paid throughout the 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 year like how mm. much you've already paid in the months prior so your co-pays will get less and less the more money you spend um, yeah so the f like for medication anyway there's a four step thingy over 12 months um so the first time you pay you're going to pay the full price for the medication and you can look up how much it will cost on a link that's in the description um and then the next time you go you'll only pay 15 percent, and then 7.5 and then zero these are the four steps bearing in mind that the following year you're paying 100 percent again yes and the following year starts on like january 13th or 14th right yes something like yeah that. something around that date it's not january 1st but it's also very helpful that like these when your doctor has given you a prescription this is done electronically so <clears throat> you can go to if it's a pretty common medication you can go to any medication with a valid form of id and be able to pick it up but just as a general rule i think it's wise to call ahead to ask do you have this in stock because Ooh. sometimes they do sometimes they don't never done that that's a good idea i always do <laughs> um and you can always ask for a generic brand if mm. it's something and if they have generic like that is that i that i've been told generic is the same thing as the name brand just in a different name yes um, i don't want to state that on the record in <laughs> case that's not true um but that same sliding scale to my understanding um again it's very complicated goes with basic healthcare services not all of them mm -hmm. but basically you can check on on sucra like what you've already paid and sort of what like the max you'll pay next month is for a treatment mm -hmm. um and that is that will that goes down again based on how much you've paid before and this is Again, treatments that are covered by Icelandic insurance, which again, you can check the link we showed you in the beginning, says everything. And we'll go a little more into what's not covered uh, later in this video. Yes. Um, but if let's say something happens, like, and obviously you need a treatment at this exact moment, you need to go to the emergency room, you need an ambulance. Um, we won't give examples of things that could happen that would cause that, because we assume you're familiar you have a heart attack or you break your arm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so the ER, the emergency number in Iceland is 112, Yes. first off. Uh, and the ER has a flat rate charge. Um, yes? Yes. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> that, that's, that's the admitting fee. Yes. Um, you might be charged for additional stuff, but that again is um, very helpfully outlined on the website for lanspitali.is. Depending on which department you need to go to in the hospital, like if you just need an x-ray or if you need to go to um, the woman's ward, for example, if you need to go to oncology, there's different rates for those particular visits, but just the general admission to the emergency room does have a flat rate, which I believe is 9,000 kroner. Yes, um, at least last time I went to the ER, I think that's what I paid. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, this was a long time ago. Um, you can also call the ER specifically at 543-1000. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that's to, you could ask like if you needed to go to the ER, um, you know, if you're having something going on. Um, but yeah, the ERs in Iceland, uh, you can also just of course show up there. You don't need to take an ambulance or something. Um, these are obvious this is obvious information but what i was going to say is that there can be a wait during the day especially at the er that said like icelanders might complain about the wait but it's nothing compared to the wait you'll have in other countries at least from my 
Very experience. True. Uh, the, the weight is nothing um, compared to that. So the time of the year also matters as well. Yeah. Like in early winter, if you go to the ER, you're going to see a lot of people with broken arms because people slip on the ice mm-hmm. because they don't believe in salting the sidewalks in this country. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> Just Actually, the most, the most, isn't it like the highest capita ER visits are during like Christmas season when people are eating a lot of salt because then they have heart yeah, attacks? That's what Baller says. Yeah. We don't know if that's true or we if don't he's know making if that's it true. up. Um, <laughs> but it sounds about right. It sounds I, right. <laughs> when I went to, um, last time I went to the emergency room was when an ex of mine had broken her arm slipping on the ice. And just by a head count of everyone who was in a sling... It was easily 80% of the people there were there wow. from having broken their arms, slipped on bummer. the ice. Yeah, you would think something would be done about this, but... You know, the last time I went was uh, I had something happen to my face or whatever, just like it was no big deal, but um, the ER doctor was wearing the one ring of power on a chain around his neck, which is like, I was like, I trust you. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I trust you. You do. Okay. This I don't in, know. This inspired trust in me. I, I was like, that's a brave move as a doctor. I don't know. I was I was like, I, I don't know. But that's just a fun fact. So I guess ER doctors in Iceland have like a very relaxed dress code. Yeah. Is what I'm getting from that. But anyway, let's move on to what is not covered mm-hmm. by Icelandic insurance. So I think in terms of stuff that's not covered, it's... Unfortunately, the first thing that's not covered is dental. Um, if yeah. you're between the ages of 18 and 66, dental is <laughs> 666. If you're that old, dental is the least of your worries. Um, but yeah, if you're between the ages of 18 and 66, uh, you're, you're not going to be covered outright, but your union yes. may help pay for this. That is true. Yeah. I don't know any unions that like really c- cover dental in a substantial, very helpful way. Neither do I. Um, but they do pay a little bit. Dental in Iceland can be expensive. Um, a lot of people do opt to travel outside of the country for large medical, I mean, for large dental surgeries. Mm-hmm. We obviously can't like recommend that or give you information on that but that is something people do here because dental is not covered and it it is expensive but it's important but somehow um, for some reason the Icelandic government doesn't agree yeah they're just like anti-teeth they don't need teeth (laughs) anyway (laughs) um, the other thing so next um mental health care Mm -hmm. now that's like has portions that are covered and portions that aren't psychiatrists which are um you know they they can prescribe uh medication they are more or less covered to a certain extent Mm. um because they are i guess they are doctors considered doctors clinicians clinicians that's the word now therapists there are ones that are covered um through like your union yeah for example but also the house of guys yeah you can get like a heavily subsidized therapist anyway, something that's marked down yes. by Hilsa Geisland. But your union may be generous enough to provide you with um, coverage for your for your yeah. therapy as well. Or like a certain amount of coverage. Yeah. Um, and so, so most of the therapists and psychologists in Icelandic therapist and psychologist is the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they, uh, m- m- most of them are private mm-hmm. and so uh, that's just how it is. Um, and again, your union will cover a certain amount of that. Um, in terms of cosmetic procedures, I mean, I don't know if this is something we have to say, but it's not covered by Icelandic insurance. No. Some are randomly covered. Uh, like some things are considered medical, uh, like medically necessary, even though like I wouldn't think they are. Like, uh, Like if you get like, acne scars lasered off that's a Mm. medical that's apparently a necessary medical expense which i believe it is so you know they should cover it that's awesome um but in terms of other like cosmetic things i'm gonna put these things under the like things like glasses hearing aids etc are not really covered by icelandic insurance that has to be paid out of pocket of course your union um will cover that 
Also, if you look at what your union covers, quite a quite uh, most not most. I don't want to make a generalization, but unions often cover a ton of other really helpful medical procedures, such as laser eye surgery. Um, again, glasses, hearing aids, fertility treatments, adoption costs, like a lot of these things, which are quite costly but necessary to I you know have a nice life, I suppose, um, mm-hmm. uh, are covered by your union. So that's really helpful. For instance, I'm getting laser eye surgery next week, um, and it's uh, like a portion of it is covered by our union, which is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. We're just going to end with some general advice Mm -hmm. on dealing with the medical system here. Yeah, I would if you if you're not so great at Icelandic um, or you're newly arrived in the country, whether no matter what your proficiency of Icelandic, I would bring someone you trust with you to ask questions, someone who understands the system and helpfully someone who can speak Icelandic and yeah, someone who can speak and understand Icelandic. Have your if you're from an EEA country, um, bring your insurance card, bring your ID, um, call ahead and ask about costs. Like don't be afraid to ask as many questions as come to your mind. That's what they're there for, and they're here to help. Yeah, and um, my last general advice would be that there are some random parts of the Icelandic medical system that are not. Uh, present in other countries I was going to talk about um, if you have a uterus then pap smears are by law required after a certain age which Mm -hmm. is probably around 20 or something Um, and they'll send you something in the mail and uh, then you go and get it it's free and um, they'll send you your results and that's um, I guess very helpful there's also free clinics for um like sexual health and sexual health testing. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's also free clinics around for certain types of counseling that you can check out for, especially for um, like domestic violence, rape and sexual assault. There's free counseling and medical services for that specifically through um, other agencies. So if you're having trouble with something, I think my number one recommendation is first talk to the doctors, see if it's covered, see what the options are, then talk to your union. Um, I think unions just cover a surprising amount of things, even things that maybe you wouldn't expect they would cover Mm. talk to them and if not um i think there's like a ton of free services around the city through private organizations that that can help you is that that's very good advice yeah wow i would say (laughs) um well that brings us to the end of this edition of tips and tricks again uh, if there's anything that we overlooked, because we do not pretend to be experts, we're just people who live in Iceland and have dealt with the system for a long time. So if you have any additional suggestions, do leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks again yes, thank you. For, for tuning in. Again, consider visiting our online shop or joining our any of the High Five Clubs to continue to support this wonderful publication. Absolutely. And if you have any topics you want us to cover, Mm. we have like, you know, our own list of things we will be talking about in the future. But please send us an email at um, hannah at grapevine.is, andy at grapevine.is, or just grapevine at grapevine.is, I guess if you want everyone to see it. Um, For topics, you can also comment topics below that you'd like us to give you the um, info on. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.